Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, August 11th, and it's a very warm day here. Uh, Mid-80s, I think. The shop is very, very warm today for some reason or the other. Uh, probably because it's in the mid-80s outside and I don't have air conditioning down here. Uh, but the mornings have just been so nice. It's been 62, 65, somewhere in that range. And I really thought this morning I could do a video out in the backyard. Um, would have loved to have done that. I just missed my window because there's only about an hour between, you know, the, <laughs> the, not that everything has to be perfect, but you need the sun up. And, you know, I'd like it to be not chilly. And it is actually chilly in the morning. Uh, but then the cicadas start, and you wouldn't be able to hear anything I had to say. So there's only about an hour that fits in that window, and I missed it this morning. So anyway, I uh, decided to get some stuff done instead, ran some errands, and it's now just a little past noon on, on Sunday. And I uh, thought I would check in with you all. I got an Orlick, um, it's an Orlick Corona, made in England. And this is something called Father Orin's blend from uh, from Four Noggins. Father Orin, O-R-I-N. Surprisingly good aromatic, and I'm not a. I say surprisingly because I'm not an aromatic guy. There we go. I'm not really prepared to talk about it. I've only had a few bowls so far, but it's uh, it's Burley, Virginia, I believe some black Cavendish, um, honey bourbon topping, I think. Very nice, very well done topping. So. Maybe I'll talk about it more after I get some more experience with it, but. Uh, you know, to me, what's important about an aromatic, and, you know, I'm not an expert on aromatics. There's only two or three now that I will smoke with any frequency. Um, but the, the topping has to be done in a way that it doesn't over-arch the tobacco. So you want to taste it, but you also want to taste the burley. You want to get the Virginian uh, notes and, and so on. Uh, and for me, at least, the, tobacco, the, the toppings are very important because I uh, have this really odd thing where I taste the chemicals where a lot of other people will taste flavorings. So, like, I can't drink flavored coffee because they all taste the same to me. I can't tell the difference between, you know, I don't even know what flavors they have. I know hazelnut's a big one. But hazelnut coffee tastes exactly the same to me as, like, you know, a berry flavor or something like that. I can't. And, and they're not pleasant flavors. They don't taste anything like hazelnut or berries. That's my problem. And that carries over into tobacco toppings as well. Anyway, Father Orin's Blend. Check it out. I just got an ounce the last time I ordered from Four Noggins. I have this thing where I keep trying aromatics in the hopes of finding some that I like. And I got lucky this time. I, I think I like this one. So I'm having that with the last cup of coffee for today. Only because my pot is now empty. I don't have any official end, end coffee drinking time. So, I uh, I watched that Father the Flame movie last night. And I know there's been some... To be honest, I have not seen any reviews. I, I know a few guys have done reviews of this. I haven't watched them. Uh, not for any reason other than I don't like to color my opinion of a movie before I watch it. Um, I had heard from several people that, that, uh, that yeah, largely negative views on the movie. Um, you know, people seem to think it's pretentious, it's um, poorly made, and uh, yeah, just just various versions of pretentious and poorly made. Um, so I tried to watch it with with an open mind, but yeah, after thinking about it, you know, sleeping on it and thinking about it some more this morning, I can't recommend the movie. It, uh, I should say documentary. It was pretty poorly made, 
when you get right down to it. Now, I initially, my initial thought was this is just okay. Um, but the more I thought about it, you know, I was kind of, to be honest, I was a little bit starstruck because of uh, Lars Everson, uh, Nana Everson. They had some some actual footage of, of Sixten, which I didn't even know footage existed of Sixten. Uh, an interview with him, uh, and I, I just, to me, that Danish school is extremely important. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't go seeking out these high-end uh, pipes by Lars Everson or anything like that, but I love the aesthetic of it, and I think that they did do a lot uh, for for the world of pipe smoking. Uh, certainly, in terms of our aesthetic sense of what a pipe is. And I say that even though I tend to favor the more traditional, you know, billiard-like shapes. Uh, but I do have a few of those Danish-inspired shapes, and I love them. I, I, there's something very beautiful and organic about them that, that I really like. And I think they really did uh, raise the engineering of the pipe to a new level. But anyway, I'm digressing. So I was, you know, kind of starstruck by the fact that I got to spend time with those folks. Uh, and of course, Lars passed away not long ago, so you know it was kind of, kind of sad in that. I was expecting more pipe making, more interviews with pipe makers. It, you know, in the end, I got got to the end of the movie, and I thought, well, that was okay. And then I thought, well, what was it really about? And I'm have, I'm struggling to come up with a way to explain this. You know, it was a documentary on on pipes ostensibly, but. But what about pipes? You know, I, it wasn't really about how they're made. It wasn't about how they're used. It was just kind of about a couple of people that allowed this guy to interview them. And I didn't get the sense that the guy knew very much about what he was putting together. I didn't get a sense that this was made by a pipe smoker. It seemed to be made by a hobbyist, you know, somebody that's interested in pipes and thinks they're cool and wanted to run out and meet famous pipe people. That's really what it felt like. And uh, I'm, maybe if you're that kind of person, you would, you know, get get a vicarious thrill from it. But like I said, other than seeing the footage of the Aversons, I could have lived without it. So, curious to know your thoughts. If you've if you've seen the movie, if you, I'd particularly like to talk to somebody that thought it was fantastic because you know I, there was so much build up for this. We've been waiting for it for what? eight years, something like that. They've been finishing this movie for eight years. Um, I remember when uh, Jeremy, I can't remember his last name, the guy the guy that made the movie, he was being interviewed on uh, Country Squire. And that, that had to be eight years ago. Had to be. And, you know, it sounded like this was imminent then. So after all that time, I was really expecting something, something good. Anyway, would love to hear your thoughts on it, and I don't I don't mean to bash it. I mean there was, there was, I'm I'm glad I watched it because I did get to see the Iversons. I did get to you know see some pipes being made and all that. It wasn't a waste of time, but I could have probably gotten just as much enjoyment from uh, an hour and a half of YouTube. So, you know, you can rent it on Amazon for you know, four or five dollars, something like that. I actually bought the digital version for ten, ten ninety nine maybe, because uh, I figured I'd probably want to watch it again. In retrospect, I probably won't, but such is life. So in other news, um, <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. My, so my wife uh, is visiting her family in Pittsburgh. She left yesterday afternoon. And a very short time after she left, I said, well, I guess I'll have to make myself some dinner. And in the process of making myself some dinner, I managed to, and I don't even know if I can get this into the, into a shot here. I hope you can see that. I managed to burn my arm all the way down. Like from here, it's, it's little spots here, and then there's another one up here. So it goes sort of at an angle. Anyway. You can see that one is kind of a nasty, where is it, nasty blister. Um, I didn't, I didn't know 
I knew I spl I knew it splashed, and I looked at my arm, and everything looked fine. And when I woke up this morning, it looks like I've got some sort of a uh, alien disease <laughs> on my arm. <laughs> so my wife was gone for less than an hour, and I managed to hurt myself in the kitchen. This just proves that I'm not meant to be alone, uh, or at least not alone around hot things. But the dinner was good, um, so I guess that makes up for it in some sense. So she'll be gone this week. She's coming back at the well next weekend, and then I'm going to get ready to head up to Vermont uh, the following weekend for a few days. My dad and brother and sister live up there, and uh, I usually visit them around the Fourth of July. But there was some other stuff going on; I wasn't able to make the trip. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, shop news. I don't really have a lot of shop news. And uh, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, guys, but I really have not done very much down here. It's been a combination of being very warm, uh, my back giving me problems, other some other... You know, I, I hate to whine, you know, if I seems like every time I turn around, I've got another medical issue, and, and these things are just, you know, I've gotten to that age where I, I told my wife the other day, I came back from a doctor's appointment, and I said, you know, I just want to get back to being one of those guys that goes to the doctor once a year. And she smiled and said, you're never going to do that. And she's right. She's right. We, we hit this age where we just require maintenance, and uh, I've needed more than my fair share of maintenance in the past year or so. And Anyway. But I don't mean to whine about it. I'm grateful for the health I have. I'm a very lucky man in a lot of ways. And I need to get to work down here because I want to get back to the work I love, which is, uh, you know, restoring, restoring pipes and sharing that with you. But right now, I couldn't restore a pipe. I couldn't clean a pipe if I wanted to. Uh, this is, this is, and the problem is I had this far wall it was just full of stuff, and I took all the stuff away because ultimately I want to water lock and paint that wall, and then I want to build new benches over there. Well, I got to the point where I had moved most of the stuff away, and now I'm like out of room, so I've got to get creative about where I'm putting things and all. And this space that I'm sitting in right now is like the only open space in this rather large basement, so I've got to got to try to maybe temporarily put things in here or find another place to, to do these videos while I finish the work. But it will happen. Um, my plan was by the end of August. I don't know if I'm going to make that given the, the travel and everything that's coming up, but it will happen and uh, we'll, we'll get the shop back opened up again very soon. So I hope uh, you're all having a nice weekend and staying cool. Uh, my plans for today are not too uh, significant, uh, you know, with the wife being away. I've already done my, my errands, grocery shopping. Oh, I went, I went to get a haircut this morning, and I didn't get one because I walked into an empty haircut area. I mean, okay, there, there were maybe two people getting their haircut. And I, I would stand there for a few minutes, and nobody says anything. I sit down. Like ten minutes later, a woman walks up to the counter and says, Can I help you? I'd yeah, like to get a haircut. Well, it's going to be a two-hour wait. <laughs> two-hour wait for a haircut. So I told her I wouldn't be getting my haircut today. Maybe tomorrow. I often find that if I if I can leave work just like maybe 15 minutes early, I can hit that window where you can walk right in and get your haircut and be on it. My haircut does not take very long. Uh, and I'm honestly very, very close to thinking that it'll be easier just to use the clippers and cut it myself. Because I just get the clippers on the side and then trim the top, and uh, why not just do clippers all over? You guys don't care if I'm bald, right? You've seen me that way before. <laughs> all right, folks, I'm rambling. Uh, thank you all for for watching, for your, for subscribing, for liking, for commenting, all that good stuff that you're always supposed to say at the end of the video, and I always forget to say. But thank you, I really appreciate you all. You have a great week ahead, and until we speak again. I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.